What's going on you 3D modeling beasts? This is JL Musi and in this video I'm going to be sharing my number one tip if you're struggling with 3D modeling. So in the background of this video you're going to be seeing me work on my BMX bike which is a project that I'm working for a Maya modeling course and I'm just overlaying my voice on top of the video. Sorry to disappoint any of you guys, but there's not going to be a special tutorial, no magical plugin, or no secret script that's going to help the issue. And this is going to be regardless of what software package you're using, whether it's Maya, Blender, Moto, ZBrush, or any 3D application. Since I've been growing my YouTube channel, I've been getting more and more emails with artists struggling with 3D modeling. And when I sit back and read more into the email, into the details, they have an underlying theme of artists actually wanting to give up. On the same note, I've also gotten a lot of emails asking me what is the shortcut, the secret, or the special sauce, the easy button to 3D modeling. How can I bypass all the time that most artists have to invest into learning a craft like 3D modeling, how can I speed that up? So this is the reason why I'm doing this video to help you guys uh, give you some insight if you are struggling with your 3D modeling or really just any of these issues that I named. So my number one tip if you're struggling with your 3D modeling is to stay the course. Stay patient and keep at it. Or better yet is what I call time under pressure. And this is an old spin off of pressure busts pipes or makes diamonds and for 3d artists is the pressure of learning you're either gonna give up and quit or you're gonna put the time in and put the effort in and actually push through the technical barrier and become a great 3d artist this might not be new or seem mind-blowing and actually might seem pretty cliche but there's a lot of truth and a lot of value once you understand this I went to school for 3d modeling and if you know the story, I talked about this in a couple of videos, but it wasn't the best school experience as far as the uh, quality of the education. And it would have been very easy for me to give up since I really had to teach myself a lot of the things or a lot of the fundamentals of 3D modeling. But within my class, within my cohort, there were a lot of talented artists at the time. And the big difference between me and the others was not really artistically, but it was really just the level of patience that we had. A lot of them said, screw this, this is too hard. I tried it, 3D modeling is just too intense. And me, even though I had those same feelings, I decided to keep at it, keep pushing, keep learning. And even though the school didn't teach me most of the things I needed to learn, I learned on my own. And I was able just to push through that technical barrier and actually become a decent 3D artist. So in this video, I'm gonna give you advice on exactly how to stay in the course. And it really comes down to three subcomponents of that, which is patience, having better expectations, and making progress. Patience, most things worth having take time. And really, like I said before, that's the difference between people who succeed and don't succeed. And this actually applies to things besides 3D modeling, like fitness, like businesses, and really art in general. Something that I learned the hard way with 3D modeling is what I call the 4X rule. It takes four times as long to create a new type of asset. So for example, when I first started 3D modeling, I mainly started doing hard surface assets and I progressed through it, I struggled through it, but eventually I got better at it. And then I decided, you know what, I wanna do characters. So I could do a vehicle in a couple days, well, I figured, hey, I could do a character in a couple of days, right? But when I made that shift, it took me a lot longer, exponentially longer, almost four times as much to do a character than I could do a vehicle or a hard surface asset. And that's because I had to learn or perfect a different set of skills. I had to learn for models to deform a certain way or the certain anatomy. And then even when I learned how to do realistic characters and I figured, hey, I wanna do stylized, well then I had to figure out the stylization and how to get the stylized look 
to look correct. So anytime that you pivot, even though you've been doing 3D modeling for a long time, but you decide to change up the recipe a little bit, you have to give yourself a lot more time to learn than that previous niche that you were in. Having better expectations. What do I mean by this? A lot of us, when we start anything, particularly something like 3D modeling, we have these expectations of by X amount of time, we should have Y amount of progress. But sometimes things don't really pan out like that. And what really doesn't help is what I call the social media trap. A lot of us see work on Instagram, we go on Facebook groups, and we also visit sites like ArtStation. And most of these uh, platforms do have a social component. We see a lot of great artwork. Sometimes, if you're a beginner, this can be very, very intimidating because the majority of the artwork that you do see is amazing work. And you, as a beginner, by nature, you're comparing yourself to these artists. But very seldomly is do we get to see underneath the surface of how long it took that artist to get to that level to create that amazing work. The other thing that you do have to understand about uh, any site that has a social uh, media or a social component is that typically the most popular artwork or the most popular content is gonna make it to the top. So a lot of times, whether you're on Reddit and things get upvoted, or you're on ArtStation and the first thing that you do see is the trending category, it's usually the best work. It's usually the thing that gets the most eyeballs, the most comments, the most engagement. But a lot of times there are starting artists, right, that start out and post, but you don't get to see that right off the back until you dig deeper into that platform because it just doesn't get that much traction. So there are beginners posting, there is beginner artwork out there, unless you actually look for it, you won't see it. And that could give you a more skewed sense of reality, thinking that all artists are pretty much exceptional and great, and you're here at this noob beginner level progress. Humans are made to progress, and when they don't, they suffer. This is true to relationships, jobs, and art as well. So if you're in a relationship, and it's been going crappy for a long time, you've been having problems, you're most likely gonna get out of that relationship. If you're at a job for two, three, five years, and you haven't been promoted, and you're still at that same job, that same cubicle, most likely you're gonna either feel pretty crappy about that job, or just end up and leave. And the same thing with your artwork. If you're not progressing in your art, you're gonna wanna quit, you're gonna be bummed out, and you're gonna stop doing it. And progress is a formula. It's the difference from where you were to where you're at now. And you have to document where you were because the reality is your memory is a finicky thing. And I'm gonna give you this analogy. I've been working out for decades, for a very long time. And sometimes I get to a point with my physique and I'm like, man, I'm not making any gains. I'm not making any progress. And that's where I go to my documentation. That's where I go to the pictures that I did on my first cut of my first book. Or when I was doing certain types of exercises, I have a training journal so I could see how many reps and how much weight I was doing at that time. And it's nice to be able to go back and if you have that documentation, you can compare it. So how does this relate to 3D modeling? Well, if you are an artist and you're just deleting all your old projects, you don't do any works in progress, it's gonna be hard to see where you actually were. Cause at a certain point, you're gonna forget how bad you were when you began, how awful as a beginner you were, and what you're doing now is gonna become the new baseline level, right? So you're not gonna have anything to compare it to, and you're gonna have no way of gauging your progress. As a rule of thumb, I think every 3D artist should go back about six months and look at where their work was at the time. And that's why it's important to have those works in progress, those old files, that documentation, so you can compare where you were and where you're at now. And something about gauging progress is that it's very, very motivating. 
I could honestly say I find great satisfaction and motivation looking at old physique photos of me a couple of years back and where I'm at now with my training, with my routines. And same thing with my artwork. I like to open up old project files, look at old works in progress and those final beauty shots and just compare it to where I'm at now. And I'm gonna close the video out with this point. If you're somebody that is rather impatient, then you should stick to doing things that are more achievable, right? At the end of the day, uh, there's really two factors to progress, which is time and quality. So you could either do the same quality in less time or in the same time produce better quality. If you're a beginner 3D modeler, then do something with simpler shapes, right? So maybe if you're doing a vehicle, don't do the new Lamborghini Diablo, do the old pickup truck, right? Those are more basic shapes. You're gonna have an easier time going from start to finish in that project versus doing that Lamborghini and struggling your way through. If you're doing character modeling, maybe doing a simple stylized cartoonish character is gonna be easier than doing that super buff ripped bodybuilder with jeans, complex hair, and weapons. So if you pick those simpler projects with simpler forms, you're gonna have an easier time starting out and actually finishing. And starting out and finishing is actually gonna keep motivating you to want to take bigger risks or take bigger projects on and ultimately make more progress and build momentum. So that's all the time that I have for you folks. Thank you so much for tuning in. As always, I love to hear feedback. So hit me up in the comment section down below. Let me know how I did. Please consider subscribing to this channel if you haven't done so already. And also share this with any 3D artists that might find value in the information. Until we meet again, folks, I will catch you next time.